Hello, how are you everyone? Thank you for joining us. Um, so I'm Pablo, as Juan David said, and I'm going to talk about client diversity. So um, this is the clearest image of the universe uh, that it was taken by Telecop uh, Web like three months ago. Uh, so imagine if instead of this, the universe would be like this. Uh, with a lot of black holes. Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? Well, that's, that's exactly how we humans collaborating in the Ethereum validation of the network are working together. Like uh, most of the nodes uh, worldwide are in Europe and in the US and very few in other regions. So for geographically decentralization, it's super important from all of us to, to make sure that we collaborate and make a better network together. If, if you go to ethernodes.org, you can see that in the top 20 uh, countries, you know, number one is the US, and there is no single country in Latin America or in, or in Africa uh, as, as, top, uh, as top 20 in, in, in nodes in, the, in their regions. Then we have a second um, centralization point, which is with client. Uh, as you know, most of the nodes are hosted with uh, Geth and Prism uh, in execution and consensus clients, which is also a kind of centralization. So first we have geographically the centra centralization, secondly, uh, client centralization, and then we have the Amazon centralization. Most of the 50% of the nodes worldwide are hosted in Amazon Web Services. So again, at the end of the day, we are building a decentralization network, super centralized in this case in Amazon. So it is the third centralization point. And then we have the fourth one, <laughs> which is uh, the providers of staking worldwide. As you know, most of them are concentrated um, in Lido uh, and centralized exchanges like like uh, Coinbase, Kraken, Binance. So again, uh, we think there's an opportunity to, to change all of this together. Um, so this is a little bit what is going on right now um, uh, in terms of, of no deployment worldwide. So um, my talk today is to uh, bring awareness and consciousness on how important it is to really think when we stake, uh, to, take, um, to take care of these four different pain points. And what we can do is make conscious choices, like make sure where you stake your ETH, you know, if you, if you can do it with a non-custodial solution, a decentralized solution, where are the nodes of that node operator hosted. Um, diversified jurisdiction is also super important. As you know, what happened with Tornado Cash a couple of months ago in the US. So again, diversity is so important here. Also with hosting providers um, and execution um, and consensus layers. So what we are doing, uh, last minute, what we are doing from Sensei Node, we are the first and only node operator in Latin America. So we just launched a smart contract, uh, a non-custodial solution where anyone can uh, deploy a node in the region. So basically you just uh, connect with your MetaMask wallet and you can send 32 ETH and have your node uh, in Latin America helping diversity of geographically diversity, also data center diversity. In Latin America, the data center industry is super fragmented which means that there are a lot of local and regional providers. So we work with all of them to make sure uh, uh, we promote decentralization. So with that smart contract, a certified of deposit, we are giving an NFT where you have your 32 ETH plus uh, all the rewards generated. And it's also the liquidity to, that can be sold in any NFT marketplace. So this is our approach to decentralization and how we want to help. Um, so, yeah, 
So now, thank you very much, and I'm happy to be here. Thank you, Pablo. We have three to four minutes for any questions. Why is important diversity, client diversity, geographically and in general? Uh, good day. I only wanted to know that you can't you uh, unite all the validators to the LIDO or Coinbase because LIDO is different validators and Coinbase uh, don't share who is the sub workers for uh, validate the Ethereum two nodes. So on your slides, it's LIDO is like 29 percent. Mostly, it's like more than 30 di different validators there. Inside LIDO, you say? It's not a LIDO, it's like a unity of independent validators. Yes, the, uh, that's correct. But you, you're talking about LIDO in particular, that they have 28 different node providers. Yes, and Coinbase has the same situation, only they don't have uh, clear information on the public sites. Yeah, in the case of LIDO, uh, yes, they work with different node providers but there's a single point of failure in the smart contract, potentially. Yeah, but, you, okay, okay. But I think that this screenshot that is on your presentation is not correct. That is only my note. It's taking, which this one? one? This yes. one? Yes. Uh, it's taken from... Huh? June, sorry. So, well, you can, yeah, you can tell June that it's not a correct slide, but it's over there. Hello. Oh, nice. Hi, thanks so much for uh, this talk. I wanted to ask you, who are the sorts of people you're finding in Latin America that are beginning to run nodes for the first time, or beginning to stake? And what sort of... Um, is this in any way helping with adoption, or is this mostly like for, for technical people? Um, and I ask this question because I'm trying to do something similar in the Middle East. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, so nowadays, as you know, uh, worldwide there are many node operators, but we are the, the only one deploying nodes in the region. And also uh, for centralized exchanges, um, in Latin America we have uh, Lemon, Bitso, Ripio, and they do not offer staking services yet. Okay, so that's also a constraint because most of Latin American users are on those exchanges, and the, the staking service is not in, 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 their, in their wallet or exchanges. So I think the, this will change in the next six months, eight months probably, when, when, the, when the, the exchanges that concentrate the, most of the Latin American uh, people are, will be available to stake. One more question, we still have time. Those are the perks to be the last one. They can go a bit over the clock here. Hi, um, I, would like to, I would like to know um, uh, 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 how every time if your smart contract is being audit, audited for security? Uh, hey. Yeah, uh, we have been through two audits, one of them uh, with CoinSpect, and yeah, and we are, we are launching next week this smart contract, so we are just starting with it. Yeah, CoinSpect is our auditor. Any more questions? Okay. All right, Pablo, thank you so much. We need to improve that map to have more points below. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, thank you, Juan David. You're welcome. Well, Big round of applause for Pablo. Thank you, muchas gracias. Thank you.